Have you ever wondered what the oldest sport is? You know what? It could be soccer. Why? It's because living beings learned kicking a long time ago. This art of kicking led them to compete for teams and yearn for victory. Many kids wish to become great soccer players and one of them is Maddie. Unfortunately, he's having a hard time playing and never managed to make a single goal. His dad gets worried and tries to cheer him up with a story of a boy named Jake. This young man belongs to a small town. He's a timid boy who works at a cafe. On another usual day at work, someone makes his heart skip a beat. It's Laura, who made him fall in love at first sight. She's a lively girl who likes Jake's innocence. Jake immediately takes a break from work and shows Laura his biggest treasure. It's a foosball table, but a special one. Jake crafted each player with his own hands and gave them a personality and backstory. He calls this little team the underdogs. Laura gets really amused by the sight and admires his playing skills. The atmosphere changes when Ace enters the cafe. He's a complete bad boy who spends his day bullying the nerds. Tonight, he chooses Jake. Ace challenges him for a match, but Jake is frozen to his place. He doesn't make a move and loses right away. Ace and his mean friends start making fun of him and call him a coward chicken. Laura gets angry and encourages Jake to show his true skills. With their support, Jake starts playing for real. Goal after goal and the match reaches a tie. Ace gets triggered and claims for another round to decide the winner. Jake wins this one as well. All the customers start clapping for him. Ace gets badly humiliated and thrown out of the cafe. He starts hating the whole town and decides to return for revenge. Seven years have passed since Ace left. Jake is still working at the same cafe, but starts feeling lonely. Because of his excellent skills, no one dares to play with him, though he still has Laura. She excitedly enters the cafe and calls her best friend. She has big news to share. Laura always wanted to become an artist and finally, she got admission to a high class arts college outside the town. Jake likes seeing her happy but the idea of Laura's departure makes him sad. It's been 7 years since they met but Jake still hasn't gathered the courage to confess his feelings. Now he has decided to reveal them but before he could say a word, a strange noise interrupts him. Helicopters are hovering over the town and a fancy bus drives in. It opens up into a huge stage where a man starts talking about a soccer player. This player spent his childhood in this town and then he traveled the world to become a famous soccer champion. Now he's returning for a special purpose. Saying this, the host points towards the sky. A huge soccer ball is shooted that opens and reveals the famous player. Surprisingly, he's no other than Ace. He proved himself and now came back to take his revenge. He has bought the town and wants to make it into a soccer stadium. The renovation starts by destroying the cafe. Seeing this, Jake rushes to evacuate the building. He also wants to save his foosball table but Ace picks it away with a claw. Laura tries to stop him but Ace tricks her to get in his plane and they fly away to his mansion. Behind, Jake is left all alone with his underdog's captain, Skip, lying nearby. Suddenly, a tear from Jake's eye drops on Skip and the little toy becomes alive. Jake can't believe his eyes. It takes him a moment to accept this magical reality. Skip encourages Jake to keep working hard and save the town, but first of all, they need to find the rest of the players. Jake takes Skip to the dump where they find Rico and Ziggy along with an opponent player, Rip. Being too small makes them get attacked by a bunch of rats, but Rico manages to tame one of them. All the players ride the rat and look for the foosball table. They find it, but it's too late as Ace has sent his men to bring the table. Jake sees them too. He uses the excavator to scare them away. Unfortunately, another guy carries away the table. Rico rushes to the rescue and uses his precious hair to leave a trail behind. Poor Rico loses all his hair, but helps Jake locate where the foosball table is. It's taken away to be used in a circus. Jake looks around and finds his players hanging in a shooting game. He rescues them right away while Skip looks for the other one. He finds two more glued to a ride. Though it seemed impossible, Skip doesn't step back and save his mates. They have also found the table but it gives rise to a quarrel between the two teams. Rip believes they have been treated unfairly. They don't have individual names or faces like underdogs while Skip argues back. Ziggy can't take it anymore and requests they unite as one. For the sake of the game, they agree and gather around Jake. For the first time since they were crafted, underdogs get a chance to be free on the ground. Skip excitedly asks Jake to look at them but the lover boy is still thinking about Laura. She needs to be rescued soon. The little players feel the pain and get determined to help. 
They see Ace's men coming back for them, so they hide away while Rip's team act lifeless. In the meantime, Jack hits their driver and takes his place. Soon, they reach the luxurious mansion. Ace is giving Laura a tour around. The mansion is full of Ace statues showing off his pride. He thought this would impress Laura, but for her, he's still just a bully. Rip's team is brought to Ace, who wants to avenge them for making him lose the match seven years ago. He has built up a complete lab for genetic engineering. He experiments on different animals, trying to combine them with the soccer tools. Right now, he wants to combine Rip's team with his shoes. Meanwhile, outside the lab, underdogs knock down the security gate and rush to save their friends. Ace grabs Jake by his neck to stop him. In a rush, Jack blurts out his love confession to Laura. Ace gets angrier and pushes Laura away. She falls over the control system and releases the mutated animals. It causes a mess all around the lab. The underdogs save their mates but accidentally triggers the fire that burns down the lab. After getting out, Laura tells Jake that he's the only one who can save their town. He defeated Ace seven years ago, and he can do it again. Hearing this, Jake goes in front of the reporters and challenges Ace to a rematch, but Ace wants it to be real soccer and the winner will get the charge of the town. While the stadium is being built, Jake tries to recruit members for his team. Mostly don't dare to stand against the world champion. Jake's team ends up consisting of old guys, his friends, a pocket picker, a policeman, a father, a caveman, and a nanny. With such a team, Jake is no hope. However, in this hard time, he's not alone. Laura is there for him. Seeing her depressed, Jake forgets his own worries and tries to cheer her up. He believes that they may not have the best teammates, but they have the best teamwork. They're not tied by skills. They're tied together with emotions. Hearing his words, Laura gives him a tight hug, which was enough to melt down Jake. Morning comes really quickly. Ace's team is made of the best players, while Jake's team is a group of random citizens. As soon as the match starts, it doesn't take much time for Ace to score a goal. Jake's team is just falling here and there and causing a mess while the opponent's team keeps scoring goals. Ace's coach asks him to take the match slowly and keep the audience watching. Although however slow he goes, Jake's team is losing anyway. Underdogs can't see this anymore. Just because they're small doesn't mean they're useless. They need to help out their creator. With this thought, they step into the ground. They hide easily under the grass and cause an opponent player to fall. They also help the keeper and push away the ball. Everyone's shocked. They can't figure out what just happened. The game continues. Skip and Ziggy fly along with a ball and while coming down, they hit the opponent's head with their metal bodies. This helps Jake get a free hit. He kicks the ball and it's flying toward the net. Just at the right moment, Ziggy distracts the keeper and finally, it's a goal. As the game continues, the underdogs keep guiding the ball away from the opponents. Ace loses his temper and starts quarreling with his own teammates. Jake accidentally slips down and sees Skip who tells him about the whole plan. Jake tells him to back away. He doesn't want to win by cheating. Moreover, his team has awakened now. They are ready to give their best. Bring it on. The team members have finally developed an understanding. They pass around the ball swiftly and all of a sudden, the emo boy hits the ball with his head and it's a goal. With two scores from each team, the match is at a critical moment right now. The last few seconds are left. Jake's team is gradually moving toward the net. The ball reaches back at Jack and he hits it with all his might. Unfortunately, it bounced back from the pole. Jake tries to catch it again but Ace hits him brutally. Jake is crying in pain while Ace jogs towards the winning goal. With the last bit of energy left in him, Jake follows Ace but he can't stop the goal. Ace wins the match, but there is complete silence around the stadium. Laura comes down on the ground and tells Jake that he might lose the match, but he won over the hearts. All the audience stands up to cheer for the losing team. They have seen the real bitter face of Ace and they definitely don't like it. The people decide to make a new town for themselves instead of living under Ace's rule. The story ends here and Maddie is put to sleep. However, in the middle of the night, Maddie sneaks into his dad's workshop and finds the underdogs there. The story he listened to was of his dad. It taught Maddie an important lesson. You don't always have to be the best. It's just about giving your best. At the end of the day, it's not the score on the board, but the impression you made with your game. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like and comment. Thank you.